Dean, hello. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Hope you're all well. We are uh, even better having talked to you this morning. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about this this opening weekend win for for Charlotte FC. I have to give you a, a massive compliment, Dean, because last year, and I'm sure you're well versed, Charlotte would would get a lead and then not be able to hold on to it. And in this case, you guys scored early and were able to keep NYCFC scoreless for the remainder of the match. How pleased were you with this performance? Yeah, I, I was really pleased. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do better. Um, you know, there's a lot of things still to work on, but I was really pleased with the work ethic of the players, the application. Um, we've been, during preseason working on how to be harder to beat, how to work without the ball and control games without the ball. And I think we've done that extremely well. I mean, I think we got to half time and their XG was something like 0 0.1. And at the end of the game, it was 0 0.5. So we're restricted to, to New York City to, to very few chances. And, you know, if you've got them foundations in, we've got players that can go and score goals. And, you know, this one came from a set piece, but I've been really pleased with how the lads have, have took on, you know, new ideas in a different way. Uh, Coach Smith, uh, first of all, I'm an NYCFC season ticket holder, so that hurt my heart, uh, everything you just said. Uh, but you, 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 you coached a great game. Uh, my first question is, I think a lot of us were surprised when your name came up in the running for this. Obviously, you have a, a, a heralded career. What, what interested you in MLS? What, what about this opportunity in particular? What about this squad or this club made you want to come out here and be a manager? Um. I've only attended a couple of MLS games before I actually came here. One of them was way back in early 2000s at, at LA Galaxy. Um, and the next one was, you know, 18 months ago at, at Charlotte FC. And um, I'd met Zoran, the uh, general manager now uh, before, uh, and I went to watch them against Red Bull. I really liked everything about the stadium, the setup, the, the support. Um, and it probably stuck with me a, a little bit. I, I was head coach in Norwich at the time in the, in the Premier League and um, you know uh, since then things change and you know I'd had some opportunities to go to coach in the in the championship um, but they didn't quite take my fancy and wasn't as challenging or fitted my ambitions as much as as this one did so when the uh, the MLS job came up I've never coached outside of the UK before so for me, it was a challenge and an opportunity to go and pick my wits in a in a different in a different culture, in a different different league, and it's um, it really enticed me. Coach Smith, when I look at this this side, it feels like the one thing that's missing is is some consist consistency in midfield, keeping the possession, being a little bit more dynamic, and and then all of a, all of a sudden getting it forward to Capetti. And I feel like he's been the one player who hasn't really maximized his potential last season. How, how important is it for you to get him on the same page as his teammates and also get him to be fine in the back of the net? Yeah, I, I don't think that will be a problem this season, uh, if I'm honest. I mean, the, the work and the effort that he put into the game the weekend, uh, he gave the penalty... To his, to his brother, as he called it, to Kerwin Vargas on um, on Saturday, which you know could have put us two 0 up when he was on penalties himself. Um, I think that shows how humble he is and how much of a team player he's become. And you know, my work is is to make sure he's he's doing most of his his running within the the goal frame rather than outside of there. You know, because when I watched his game last season, I felt he was doing too much work outside the, the penalty box and he needs to get in there a lot more to score goals. Um, but he's become, you know, um, a real big part of what we've done in pre-season. And, uh, you know, the players are, st are starting to, to really gel and, and, and find out what his strengths are. Dean, what's it like communicating with Enzo? I feel like obviously the manager needs to be on the same page with the best player, but I, I imagine that his English isn't the best, your Spanish isn't the best, but how do you get through to him to get the best out of him? Do you know what? I, had, I heard um, an interview at my press conference in Spanish the other day with my accent, so my Spanish <laughs> sounds quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, en Enzo's English is really good, actually. Uh, so communication's not a problem with him. Um, 
you know, we, we've, we've already hit it off together. We, we get on well. He understands me. Um, he knows what I want. I've shown him clips already. Uh, you know, he's one of them players who I've asked him to watch his game back and come to me with, with questions. And he's inquisitive. He wants to get better. And, you know, uh, I, I sometimes sit, stand back a little bit when, when I hear that it's the best player. It's a designated player. Um, you know, the best player, he's got to go and prove that. Um, you know, and the other players will help him do that as well. But, you know, I, what, I've, what I've got within the team is a real good team ethic and it won't just be about one or two players this season. It'll be about the whole squad. Uh, Coach, look, I'm sure, you know, you're really impressed with the squad, the fan base. It's, a, it's absolutely massive and impressive, and I'm sure you prepared well for it. But I have a personal question for you. I've, I've been to Charlotte in the summer. Those mosquitoes should have license plates on them. It is extremely <laughs> hot and humid. Are you a dude from West Brom who's only coached in the UK? Are you prepared for this heat, dog? I don't know. It is hot. I, it I'm is still, intense. I, I am still searching for a sponsorship for Factor 100, um, some notion. Uh, you know, but, but now I'll be looking for a sponsorship for some uh, mosquito repellent as well, I think. <laughs> oh, wait till you meet them. <laughs> They'll awesome. knock on your door and say hello. That's how big they are. Uh, Coach, I've, yeah. uh, I've had the pleasure of, of attending a match at Bank of America Stadium. And, I mean, we keep talking about it. Like, the Charlotte fans are second to none. Just absolutely incredible. Over 62,000 fans opening weekend. Um, I've got my, my Queen Charlotte top on. Yep. Um, how... How surprising was it for you to experience sort of the soccer culture in, in Charlotte, North Carolina? Because, I mean, you've had the experience of coaching at some of these storied clubs like Aston Villa and Norwich. How does it, how does it compare to what you're experiencing uh, in the Queen City? I mean, to be honest, uh, we really put on a show on, on, on Saturday evening. It was, it was great to see. There was a flyover. There was fireworks. Um, the fans with the national anthem and the, the Poznan, it, it was really exciting and um, it was really enjoyable as well. And You know, I, in the EPL, they think they can put our show on, but no, wait till you come here. And uh, I was really impressed with it. And, you know, I think that set the, the, the standard for, for the game because certainly my players flew out of the blocks. And uh, I think, you know, um, the, the show that was put on before that certainly helped them. Dean, everything outside of the pitch is extraordinary and I'm, and I'm glad that that you're at a place where we're going to get to witness that a lot that that's really awesome from a from a fan culture perspective here in major league soccer but on the field charlotte since its inception has been a bit tumultuous and you've managed at these clubs with centennial long history the history that predates <laughs> so many things <laughs> but charlotte you've come to a place at a club that's so young, how what what what's your plan to start building that history? Do you have bullet points that you need to hit this season to say, all right, the pillars of this club are being built? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's obviously long histories with, with a lot of the clubs in in the UK, and I'll just go back to two clubs that I worked with. Um, so when I went into Brentford. The style of play was already set. The, the chairman, Matthew Benham, knew where he wanted to go. He felt that my footballing philosophy and style of play fitted with his. So I went into a club that was already on the track to where they wanted to go to. Whereas Aston Villa, who's got a long, proud history, when I got offered the job at Aston Villa, it was, listen, you've got two and a half chances to get us promoted. Now, I could go in and put my stamp and my style of play in. So... You know, this is no different now, Charlotte. It hasn't got the history, obviously, of, of Aston Villa or Brentford, but it's got the chance now for, for me to imprint my style of play, my philosophy into this club and, and align it together with the legacy in the academy, but, you know, all the people within the club. And, you know, the big thing for me is to set the culture and the, and the, and the environment for, for people to go and succeed. And, you know, I've done it before at other clubs, and that's what's not going to be any different, to be honest, in, uh, in the MLS. Uh, Coach, I'm not sure what your, you know, favorite post-match meal was. I'm assuming maybe there was a chippy involved in England. But we don't have chippies, not in Charlotte. We got Bojangles. Have you been to a Bojangles? And if you have, what was your order and what did you think? 
Unfortunately, it's, I'm ashamed to say that I haven't been there yet, uh, but I have been asked many a times that I need to go to Bojangles. <laughs> um, uh, buddy, you got to go. We got to get the fan. Oh, no. Tell him what to get. You got to get the, the fried chicken and the biscuit. Chicken tenders, some people are big fans of the tenders, but you got to get fried chicken and a biscuit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm gonna give it a go, that's for sure. I, I'm, I can't do grits. I'm not doing grits. <laughs> Here, the grits is off. Off the table. <laughs> So, Dean, if you're looking at this season, you, you, you got off to a good start. What do you think will be your biggest challenge moving forward? I, I think for me, just to understanding the league, I mean, it was great to have the preseason that we had. I think we played five, you know, Western Conference teams. So it gave me an idea of the sort of challenges that we would have. You know, uh, it was a big game for us on, on Saturday simply because we've now got three on the road, you know, uh, we're up in Canada for the next two weekends, you know, a long trip to Vancouver, then to Toronto and then Nashville. So, um, you know, I think going away from home and, and sampling that uh, and, and, and understanding, you know, the, the time difference, the climate difference, the altitude at some places as well. I think that's going to be the biggest difference for me and, and things that I'm going to have to learn and lean on my coaching staff as well. One last question for me. You, you got to manage Josh Sargent. Um, the young U.S. international. What are your thoughts on his progress and where he is today? And wh where's his ceiling? Um, he can go and play in the uh, EPL again, that's for sure. He's, he's, he's not got a ceiling at the moment. Unfortunately, he's had a, a couple of injuries. Um, he's, he's just come back now. He started scoring goals again in the championship with Norwich. Um, but... He's, he's actually really mature for somebody so young, you know, uh, moved countries very young, uh, twice went to Germany, then to, to England, uh, married with a child, um, but a really good football with a really good head on his shoulders as well. And he'll, he'll keep getting better. If he can stay injury free, then I think he'll be, he'll be um, you know, certainty in the, in the U.S. national team. Awesome. Love to hear it. Um, all right, Coach. Well, before we let you go, uh, you've, you've had the, the pleasure of coaching some pretty big names, Jack Grealish being one of them. When you were announced as Charlotte's new head coach, he was very excited about it, put his a nice post up on social media. And then over the weekend after your first win, he posted this. <laughs> Dino with the hands up emojis, uh, which is so cool. I, what does it mean to you to, to know that the guys back home are, are watching and following you as you take on this new adventure here in America? Yeah, it, it makes me really proud. Um, you know, I keep in touch with a lot of my, my ex-players. I mean, you know, I think part of my success as a manager and, and a coach is to make sure that I, I get close to the to the players, I understand what makes them tick because I have to help develop them. And, you know, uh, Jack sent me a video to, to play for the, the players before the game, um, you know, uh, which was a re which went, went down really well. Um, but I speak to, you know, John McGinn as well, uh, Aston Villa and Ollie Watkins and many more. But it, it's really it's really nice for the support I'm getting. They're, they're trying to get a contract with Charlotte? That's right. <laughs> Bring them over. <laughs> Do some recruiting, coach. I, I'm not, I'm not sure we can afford them at the moment, but <laughs> yeah, we will certainly try.